I told uh, Mr. Vasu uh, that the yellow ribbon is dead. As far as prisoners are concerned, yellow ribbon is dead. It's now mostly used as a budget head. You know, they submit the budget uh, submission each year in the yellow ribbon. And that. But um, in prison, for prisoners, the ordinary prisoners in prison, it's dead. Welcome back, and today we are speaking to Joe Nata. Uh, Mr. Nata, second segment, let me ask uh, uh, this question. Uh, publicly, a lot of questions have been raised, who was involved, who wasn't involved. Was George Spade the face of the 2000 coup? Well, let's uh, put it this way. He was left with a baby on his lap. Um, there were people. Um, they didn't turn up. Uh, and uh, um, And um, like I said, you know, he was left with a baby on his lap, and uh, he just have to make do and try and uh, do the best out of the situation that he was left with. Mm -hmm. um, of course, I found this out uh, uh, when I went in to join them. Uh, um, there were people waiting out there for the right. Uh, uh, for whatever the signal or the for him to come in, there was a particular person who was sipping a, a, um, in orange juice in a particular hotel in Suva, and he was supposed to, and it didn't turn up. Um, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But then again, you know, the, uh, those people got away. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, no, if you say that George was, uh, the, he was, uh, he was just a front man, mm. and uh, it'll later come out in my book, and I'm sure George too will have a, a something to say. Um, but um, uh, no, he was not uh, the, he was not the whole show. Mm. Uh, you will reveal the name of this person in your book, uh, or, or? Well, I, well, I, I have to think about it because there are people, there are families. You know, just like prison, you know, prison, and a man goes to prison, he doesn't suffer alone. The family suffers, uh, um, and those are the things that I have to think about. You know, does it serve any purpose? If it does, then it, I think the Truth Commission will be the place to, to to talk about it, and then give an opportunity for them to to defend or to explain themselves. Um, uh, uh, squealing uh, to the Fiji Times, maybe not. Uh, um, yeah, at the right time. Um, there's a lot of things in uh, the. The book will be, a, hopefully, it will be a healing book for, for me personally. I need to t tell uh, things so that uh, it, 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 it explains uh, some of the things that, uh, some of the misconceptions and some of the, the, the straight jacket. Uh, we, and hopefully it will explain a few things that people want to know. But before, if the real Truth Commission comes in before that, um, well and good. Mm. 24 years in jail. Let's speak about your life in prison then. Life went by for 24 years when you were in jail. Social media came about, Facebook mm. came about, mm. YouTube came about, Twitter came about, mm. Prime Ministers changed. First question, while in jail, have you learned uh, or what did you learn about Facebook? Did you know that something like Facebook existed? Oh, no. Before I went to prison, there was Facebook, mm. but not to the extent that, but YouTube, uh, WhatsApp, Messengers, Viber. I remember in prison, they were saying, Viber me, Viber me, Viber me. I, uh, I was wondering, you know, what is this Viber me? Now I know what Viber is, and uh, I'm still learning. Uh, I see you people. To, you are at home with this technology, but I'm still trying to 
um, to uh, use this phone. Uh, I remember my daughter bought me a phone and um, she was ringing and I was supposed to wipe, swipe and swipe, and, but I swiped and didn't because I was very tender with it. I was scared I might break the screen, mm -hmm. so I was swiping slowly and doesn't. So what I do, I wait until the call finishes, then I call back and uh, she was laughing and laughing and laughing. So those are the kind of little uh, funny things that happen when you've been in the bush for a long time. Mm -hmm. Can you describe a day in prison uh, when you went in? Uh, well, how did the how how did the first days go by? And as you as the years went by, how were you graduated to a senior person to contribute positively towards the prison system? Yeah, no, prison is like I said, prison is never uh, a good place. Hopefully, uh, you won't end up there. Um, but. Um, it depends on the person, on the maturity level of the person, because the prison can be a place where you can, where you take stock, reflect, contemplate, and 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 uh, uh, and you move forward. Um, and if, I I can say without any doubt that I'm more clearer about what I want to do. Uh, I found myself. Uh, no, I, uh, in prison, I was. I think I contributed uh, a, a bit to the uh, prison life. I was. Uh, everybody's talking about the yellow ribbon. I, I, I think I can say with uh, confidence and <laughs> I, without fear of being contradicted that I was very, very deeply involved with the yellow ribbon. Uh, I, well, I don't like to use the word I, but we we did the strategic uh, the planning for the campaign and awareness of the yellow ribbon. Um, the commissioner then, Mr. Naval Rua, called me up one day and then I went to the meeting of the big bosses in prison and I was told about this yellow ribbon and then I asked a question I asked there was only one question I asked, you know, what's your budget? I said, no budget. I said, give me three days and I'll work out a campaign strategy. So um, that's what happened. And now you see the yellow ribbon, everybody's talking about the yellow ribbon. Um, if that is uh, considered as a humble contribution to uh, life in prison, I, yes, I think I, I, uh, I'm comfortable with that. And I think it contributed to the nation as well. Mm. It was a good program, mm. but uh, we need to change it now. Mm. Change it in what 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 terms? Well, it has. It's, it, I think the the original objective of the yellow ribbon has not uh, uh, sort of uh, been uh, sidelined. Uh, uh, I remember I I, I told uh, Mr. Vasu uh, that the yellow ribbon is dead. As far as prisoners are concerned, yellow ribbon is dead. It's now mostly used as a budget head. You know, they submit the budget uh, submission each year in a yellow ribbon. And but um, in prison, for prisoners, the ordinary prisoners in prison, it's dead. Um, but, uh, but you know, it served its purpose. And I, but I think we should move on and come in with um, something else. But you know, I have some ideas. I have some thoughts on that that could be could be used. And I will, in, in time, I will talk to the current prison um, management. When when you were sent to prison, uh, you, uh, George Spade, uh, Mr. Solatolu, were you hailed as heroes amongst the inmates there? Oh, if they want to be heroes and they be heroes, I'm definitely not a hero. I'm just a disgraced journalist. Uh, um, no. Uh, to, uh, I, I see myself as a uh, um, disgraced, uh, a person who should wallow in ignominy. Um, no, uh, uh, if you consider the damage it did to the nation, to the people, and I remember, you know, I was, and then I, in prison, my reflection was that uh, I, it, it hurts me when I realize that even my Indian friends may think of me as a racist, you know, and they probably be thinking, you know, what a hypocrite! All these times we've been friends, you know. When one of my friends, um, uh, I remember during the trial, 
uh, when Ashala can stop talking to me, I, that was, hmm. yeah. In prison, uh, did you work? Did you earn money? And if yes, uh, when you left, when you came out of prison, how much money did you come out with? <laughs> <laughs> Not what you're earning, mate. I can tell you that. Uh, no, we do have a little bit of a, a, a pittance. Um, yeah, in fact, it's funny you mentioned that because I just rang up the commissioner, where's my money? Uh, Deputy Commissioner, I think. And I still haven't received money in the six months down the track. But uh, it's not much. Huh? But yeah, we do get paid, but we do work. Uh, I, I love working in prison. And in fact, I, that's when I came to know farming. I actually, and I, I, we did a, 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 some uh, cooperative work with the uh, uh, Fiji National University, the research station in Cornivia. And we, I was in charge of a um, gene bank for root crops. Uh, varieties of, I did not know that we have about 105 varieties of cassava, uh, but we only have about 24 varieties in Fiji. Uh, I did not know that we have so many varieties of Vandalo. I, well, there were a few that I know of, uh, but uh, 22 varieties uh, Kumala and uh, yams. And, uh, but I enjoyed it, and then I learned how to plant peanut and not only learn but cook and eat peanut. Mm -hmm in prison. So those are the, and St. Stephen was looking after the, the piggery, um, and uh, was uh, looking after the poultry, and a lot of us who came in in 2000, when in 2000, we were um, actively and I think profitably engaged in prison. George Pate was also involved in the, in the setting up of the business unit. Uh, uh, and these are the things that the public, uh, people who still hold grudges again, uh, George Spade and St. Stephen. St. Stephen built that piggery from 30 to about 300 pigs mm -hmm. at the moment. That's St. Stephen. And this kind of contribution should be told. Uh, um, and then uh, people are still, uh, his, I, I feel uh, guilty. Uh, that's another part of my guilt there. And you know, why should they continue to be in prison when I'm free? Mm -hmm. And they have not contributed just as much as I have contributed to prison life. Uh, Shane has got a young family, you know, which uh, sad. But uh, yes, I think I. Just for the record, Shane Stevens was convicted and jailed uh, on charges of carrying out the mutiny at QEB. Mr. Nata, let me ask you: Was there any time in prison that you? went to a corner and wept and cried your heart Oh yeah, heart every, time, every time. See, prison has made me, has mellowed me. I, I feel, I, 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 I look at uh, uh, visitors when they come in and I see you know, when the family cries and you know, when they have their first visit and I sit there and uh, things, uh, yeah, I know you become emotional. Uh, when you are reflective, you tend to, uh, sometimes you're overwhelmed with guilt and the pain that you <coughs> that you have caused others. Um, um, my 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 family suffered a lot. Like I said, fam family is uh, the one that suffers most. You know, I always say that they are the the silent victims when a person goes to prison, particularly at a certain level. Um, when I think about the pain that I caused my family. Um, uh, none of my nieces and nephew got government scholarship, uh, although they uh, about 15 of my nieces and nephew went through university and their parents had to f fork out for their... Uh, those are the kind of things. And my two brothers, they were up at that level uh, in their separate careers, but they, were, they only reached the you know, second highest level and they, they're stuck there. Uh, those are the kind of things. And I felt the guilt. Uh, um, my children, you know, I, I deserted them, abandoned them, you know, just when they needed you. Uh, and when you ask, you those kind of things that, you know, it's tend to have a, uh, 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 you know, you choke a little bit. Yeah. Um, those kind of things, you know, when I was, you know, probably aware I was, uh, released briefly in 2013, and then I was brought back in. You know, you know, I, it was painful, painful. But um, um, but that's it. It comes with the, the deal. You mm -hmm. know, 
it comes with being foolish. The previous Fiji First government uh, and its Attorney General would have ordered or would have allowed you to release early after your 10 year sentence, but they, did, they didn't do that. They kept you in. Now that you learn that the Fiji First Party is on the demise of being deregistered, is there a feeling inside you that good riddance that they are going? Well, maybe the party. Uh, you know, I, I, I don't hold any grudge anymore. Even you know, I, I know that maybe the Attorney General could have released me if he wanted to, but the fact is that they didn't want to release us. Um, uh, but uh, bitterness, I don't think I will, I'm bitter. I think I'm a more... Uh, uh, I understand the situation more now. I, uh, I remember I went to the village the, recently, um, uh, and then they wanted to hear stories, and they said, look, uh, we want to Talanoa. I said, well, and I'm going home to have a shower. I'll come back in town on one condition. Nobody is to badmouth the former prime minister. Um, because, you see, I, I, I've forgiven. I've, uh, um, when people say, you yeah, know, I've got heaps of messages, you know, go, go, die in prison, those kind of things, but they do not understand. The only person who's been to prison will understand. You know, I saw my kids crying when I left, you know. Um, yeah, and uh, I saw Lesson Young says grandchildren on TV. Same posture, you know, like, you know, uh, I don't think I can wish that. <clears throat> Even on Mr. Kayum and Mr. Ben Marama. Uh, but having said that, there are consequences. I know that. Uh, uh, for for them, I don't want anybody. Even if this truth commission comes out, I don't want anybody to go back into prison, to go to prison because of what happened. Uh, but if you've been, you know, dipping into the till while you're in power, then there is a different matter. Uh, because uh, you know, there are consequences. Mm. Uh, but you know, like you know. People don't think about the consequences when you. So yeah. When you were released, uh, when your children came to hug you, what were the first words you spoke, you uttered to each other? Oh, you know, yeah. well, it's not, you know, it doesn't require words. You know, I think it was just emotion, the enormity of the moment. The uh, I got my son. You know, my son was born the same year I went to prison. Uh, um, and you know, he's never known a father. Uh, that you know, uh, I'm still trying to get to know my son. But you know, maybe it's too late. You know, he's like he's 24. He's getting, he's at university. We, I can't hold him back. And as much as I try to have a bit of father time, son time, uh, things have moved on. Uh, but. One of the, uh, and I have t uh, two daughters, uh, um, I, I believe that's among the, the great gifts of God is that when it's for your children to accept you and still love you, uh, having been, having abandoned them. Uh, and that's touching, you know, uh, I don't deserve, uh, but uh, and my, my brothers, my, my brothers and my, my sister and my nieces and nephew, the fact that they still, you know, that's why family is always important. Uh, the, the family who is the victim is the same family who will receive you when you come out of uh, uh, prison, particularly mothers, you know, you know, kids with mothers. And I always tell them, you know, the, 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 the brother may abandon you, the, 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 uh, you know, your wife, you know, unfortunately it happens a lot of time, the wives disappear. 
um, but it's the mother who is always there, always there for you. They, it doesn't long, matter how long, it is the mother. I remember when a friend of mine uh, is deported from the States, from the US, but the mother came all the way from the States and came and just wept and wept and wept. And the, you know, this kid told the mother, oh, stop crying, you came all the way from America to come and cry. You know, those kind of things. But you know, nobody understands the love of a mother except a mother. Mm. Mr. Nathan, we'll take a short break and uh, continue the discussion on the other side.